And I am your host, Kristen Bry, along with Jane Madenair. And it's been a week. Well, I guess it's been a week since Justice Janet Protasewicz has been uh, sworn in. And it's been six days since Law Forward <laughs> filed their lawsuit to change Wisconsin's legislative maps uh, claim, and claims the map favor the Republicans. And I was, I think, in flight to Vegas when this was announced. And I was like, well, that was fast. <laughs> and so we are so excited to talk to uh, Law Forward, the law firm that is heading up the lawsuit. Uh, the executive director of Law Forward, Nicole, Nicole S- Safar, who I've been saying it wrong. It's Safar, not Safar. Nice to meet you. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, it's lovely to be here and to meet you. And, you know, I will just say that we've been waiting 12 years and a day before yeah. we filed. So. so that is, is that what, how long did you all know? Was it basically as soon as uh, Judge Janet, now Justice Janet, was elected? Did you guys know that it was going to be the day after she was sworn in that this was the strategy from the get go? You know, we have been working on this at Law Forward since we were founded in 2020. And one of the core pieces of our mission was to be ready to do redistricting litigation after the census in 2021. So um, really working on getting rid of these gerrymandered maps has just been, we've been working on it since the beginning. And after the... Wisconsin Supreme Court gave us the decision in the Johnson v. WEC case in um, the spring of 2021. We kept working on it and Mm -hmm. we've been doing the research and thinking about what a state constitutional claim could look like in Wisconsin. And, you know, we did what all good lawyers do. We did the research. We waited for the right opportunity with the right court. And then we got the voters who have been being harmed by this gerrymander and we filed the case. And here we go. And we're off to the races. And so we, I mean, I think for those of us who have been so passionate about this for a while and want fair maps so badly, everyone's very excited, but I think most of us are not lawyers. And so (laughs) can you explain a little bit more of how the structure or the arguments being made in the case that you all have filed differs from redistricting cases in the past? Yeah. Yeah. That's such a good question. And, you know, I think a huge difference, at least from La Forward's perspective in, in the case that we wanted to bring this time, is that this case is centered on the voters. We have 19 plaintiffs from across the state of Wisconsin who are in districts where their voices are not represented because of the gerrymander. And there are different reasons. We make different claims um, that apply to some, that don't apply to all of the plaintiffs. Different different claims apply to different plaintiffs. Um, But at the heart of the case, of this case, is we are asking the Wisconsin State Supreme Court, so the Wisconsin court system, to look at the Wisconsin Constitution and say that partisan gerrymanders violate our Constitution. So these are questions that our state court and our Wisconsin State Supreme Court hasn't answered yet. Okay. Um, the, and that's really the main difference. The The case that came out of, after the census and the People's Maps Commission and, and the the Republican, the gerrymandered Republicans passing an even more gerrymandered map. (laughs) That that case didn't grapple really with the idea of partisan gerrymandering. It was uh, there were other other questions at stake. So that's a big difference in this case. And what we're essentially asking is we're asking the court to look at these current maps and determine that the Wisconsin Constitution protects the voters, the petitioners in the 19 districts that that we have and and all of the gerrymandered districts, but protects them from being treated differently, differently just because of their political views. So that's so because because before things have gone, is there any chance that this could raise again to the U.S. Supreme Court? Because that's I feel like in times past, even in this last time, because what I, in the saga that was our current maps, Mm -hmm. originally 
our Wisconsin State Supreme Court, Ryan Hagedorn, the swing vote, sided with the liberal justices and at first adopted Tony Evers maps, which were still gerrymandered, but because of the lease change, um, they were a little bit less. And then that kind of got swooped up by the U.S. Supreme Court and it had to come back and be reversed and timeline, da, 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 da. All of a sudden we're, we have an even more gerrymandered Republican map. What is the out like is there a chance that something like that can happen again even though this is clearly a case that's been structured to look at the wisconsin constitution yeah i mean i think that is the the question at the end of the day this case is about the wisconsin constitution and whether or not it prohibits a partisan gerrymander the wisconsin state supreme court has the ultimate say on Wisconsin law and the Wisconsin Constitution, the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't get to say, oh, we have a different interpretation of the Wisconsin Constitution. Okay. That that being said, like this is this idea that the the extreme right wing gerrymander gets gets broken up in this case is an existential threat to the other side. And you know, I I don't put anything past them in how yeah. they are trying to prevent this and fight back. So I, I can't say that it is 100% impossible. Um, you yeah. know, claims could come up at some point during this litigation. We just, we don't know, but it is really our intent to make sure that we put these questions of Wisconsin law in front of the Wisconsin Supreme Court, because at the end of the day, they are the ones who have the, who are charged, really, who have the duty to interpret our Constitution. We're talking to Nicole Safar, who is Law Forward's executive director, who is, uh, in Law Forward is the law firm that is uh, taking up the case for redistricting in Wisconsin. So part of the thing that I think is interesting that I think, Jane, when we talked about it briefly yesterday, you didn't realize was happening. So in the case, the idea of respondents, again, not a lawyer, Um so the Wisconsin Elections Commission and the state senators representing odd numbered districts are named as respondents in the lawsuit. What does that mean? And what does that mean for potentially depending on the ruling? Yeah, that's a really great question as well. So the first part of the question is the Wisconsin Election Committee or Commission, the Wisconsin Elections Commission is named as the defendant because they make the maps, right? They're the ones who administer our elections. They, you know, take the paperwork for candidates who, when they get their nomination signatures, like they they run the nuts and bolts of the system. So at the they are the ones who are charged with the duty of, you know, enforcing who is in what district and then counting the votes in that district. Um, the senator, the state senators who are in the odd numbered districts are senators who would not be up in the next election. So our whole argument to the court is that this is such an egregious injury. You need to fix it now. We need to have new maps that are not gerrymandered by the next election, which is the fall of 2024. And all of the assembly seats that's fine. They're all up in 2024 mm -hmm. and half the Senate seats are up. So all of those um, elected officials will be, are essentially, their terms are up. They'll be out of office. There'll be an opportunity to get new, new people elected. But the odd numbered senators are not. So to make sure that we get um, fair maps in all of the districts, we need to have a mechanism that also kicks those odd numbered senators out of their seats. And then essentially it will be special election for the odd numbered Senate seats, or at least that's the room. That is what we are proposing the court should do. And which is why they were named. We have to get okay. them out. And that, is that unprecedented? Is, or has that happened before as far as any other, I don't know, other states or just as far as being like, guess what? Everybody's up for re-election. <laughs> So I can't speak to other states in the and their um, partisan gerrymandering cases because I you know other they might have different terms and and there certainly have been other states that have been successful using their state constitutions to say a partisan gerrymander is illegal, um, but the the legal procedure I guess that we used 
it, it's called quo warranto, and it, it has been used. If you think someone is illegally in an office, you can make this claim against them. So um, that has happened before, but I, I don't think it has necessarily in the case of the gerrymander. I'm just trying to think of if this is successful, how many races there's going to be, how many like this is it's it's interesting to me as someone who just follows the news and has followed this so much of the ramifications of what this can mean. And so I, we have two minutes, so I'm going to ask one more question, but when we're going to we have to go to a break soon. So if I have to cut you off, I'm sorry. Um, but why? So this is so far just focused on state assembly, state senate. There was the decision made not to challenge at all the congressional maps. Why? Yeah. So I think it just comes down to this idea that the, the way the partisan gerrymander has so damaged our state's ability for our state government to function, um, the way that the, the right-wing Republican gerrymander has consolidated its own power and stripped power from the executive, from agencies, from local governments has so calcified and damaged our government that we just needed to stay laser focused on Got it. fixing that. And it's not to say that there aren't problems with congressional maps and we might very well hear from other interested parties claims about that. But really our focus is we have got to fix these state maps. We have got to get Wisconsin back on track to repair some of this harm that's been done. All right, that is good to know. Laser focus is good. Focus on one thing. Uh, when we come back, Nicole Safar will still be here to talk about the redistricting lawsuit. So let's talk about some of the hypotheticals that could happen depending on the ruling. So stay with us. If you have any questions, feel free to text them in. 844-967-2789. This is As Goes Wisconsin. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. We are talking to Law Forward's Nicole Safar on the redistricting lawsuit. Uh, Jane, did we have a text? We do. And you can always check in 844-967-2789. Uh, Mark from the SAC is checking in. He says, given our constitution requires maps to be both contiguous and compact, the maps we have currently are clearly unconstitutional. Any honest person would have to admit that the current maps are neither. That is true. That, that's the word Mark, that I couldn't find Mark yesterday is, was contiguous. Mark, Mark is rarely <laughs> wrong. That is true. Mark is Mark, Mark is, fails it a lot. Yeah. Um, so I guess in that scenario, as far as the argument that these are unconstitutional and what does the ideal timeline look like? Because obviously the turnaround time of filing this the day after the liberal, there was a liberal majority um, in the hopes that these maps can be changed and altered by, I mean, it has to be done by April because people have to announce that they're running and know what their district is going to be for a fall election. And so what does, I mean, and you filed directly with the Supreme Court. So unlike the abortion case that we expect to end up in front of the Wisconsin Supreme Court, that's making its way through the lower courts. Y'all are bypassing that. And so what does this actually look like as far as an ideal timeline? Yeah, so an ideal timeline and what we've asked the court to do is to, to think about this case in two phases. And in the first phase, to really grapple with the idea of whether or not the partisan gerrymander is unconstitutional and to, to make a decision on the constitutionality of these maps. Um, and then the second phase would be, okay, hopefully they've agreed with us and they, they say these are unconstitutional. And the second phase would be, what are we going to do about it? So what remedial action is the court going to take? And how is the court going to go about ensuring that we have fair maps that do not entrench a partisan gerrymander? So that's sort of part of the <laughs> case that you know, is a little less clear of, of how the court's going, going to approach that. We don't know. Um, and, you know, we're going to ask them, uh, our experts, and, and we're going to ask them to do it in a way that we think is most useful. Other parties might jump in and ask them to do it a different way. But we really think that they can get done with this liability phase and then the remedial phase before the middle of March, which is okay. when the WEC and candidates who are going to be running in 
for re-election in 20 or for election in 2024 would need to know who's in their district to start getting their signatures. So that's really our ideal timeline. That's what we're asking the court for. That's what we're going to be ready to do um, the work on that timeline. And we've seen both our own state court do that in the Johnson case, they which mm-hmm. was filed in August and was it they were able to move it through um, by April. But we've also seen other state courts move that quickly on cases like these. So there is a roadmap to doing this in a timely manner that ensures we do not have these gerrymandered districts a day longer than um, we've already had. No, we've already had them. Um, so I guess, cause that I think is the part that's still murky and it sounds like you can't there without a crystal ball, no one knows, but I think that the idea of who, where does the new map? So say, like you said, the, 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 our current map found to be ruled to be unconstitutional. Now what is it going back to the maps that were already introduced in from our last to the people's the people's maps commission the governor evers maps is it one is it maps that are already drawn is it a brand new map do the courts draw the map is that kind of the um, the thing that like no one really knows and it will be solely up to the justices to decide yeah i mean okay that's basically it and you know they the justices will figure out like what they need to make a decision um they'll They'll, they could decide that they want to do it themselves and like like figure out what the criteria is and 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 figure out what the maps are. They could bring in what's called a special master, uh, so an ob- objective like expert to create maps and then present them to the court. Um, they could ask the different parties to submit their own maps, uh, which is okay. what happened in the Johnson case. The court asked for everybody who wanted to, to submit their own maps. Um, they could ask the legislature and the governor to go back to the drawing board and and resubmit new maps. Um, But that seems a little bit unlikely since the political process has already failed us in that space. Yeah. Um, Is there a chance? I mean, is there any chance that that criteria of least change, will that get thrown out immediately? Or is that still something that has to stay because of the last case? So, our constitution, our state constitution says a lot of things about what's required for legislative maps and least changes is not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a standard that the court created in the last go around. And under these circumstances that we're in, we cannot reimpose those that court created standard again. Um, we, It's just not an appropriate standard to put into the mix when we're making this partisan gerrymander argument. So hopefully, no. <laughs> that means no. <laughs> um, and it, my final question then, what is, because I think we said this yesterday, is there a chance that we end up with gerrymandered maps just the other way that are like he- heavily favored towards Democrats and it's just the same, for those of us who have been crying fair maps, and do not want things just do not just want a democratic majority. Is there a chance that that could happen or are the things that are on the table? Do you think that the likelihood if we get new maps, they would actually be fair? So at the heart of this case um, that that we filed is the whole idea that a partisan gerrymander is unconstitutional. The partisan gerrymander that we have right now is a right-wing Republican gerrymander, but our the heart of our legal argument is that you cannot have a partisan gerrymander under the Constitution. So, um, you know, I think that, like I said, don't know what the maps are going to look like, what people yep. are going to close, what the judges are justice is going to decide but we don't want any partisan variant. any partisan unfortunately we have to let you go but nicole safar that was so great i'm sorry that we asked the question too late but we will keep following up with you thank you for your work and thank you for being on the show thank you so much we'll, be back. we'll come back anytime